Uber and Lyft drivers have done a strike today in 11 major cities. This is a nationwide 24 hour strike in order to demand better working conditions, better pay, and also to draw attention to incredibly important legislation called the PRO Act. Now, this strike is taking place, as I mentioned, in 11 cities. That includes San Diego, Austin, Boston, Cleveland, Las Vegas, Pittsburgh, Denver, and Baltimore. And we should show solidarity with these drivers. If you were thinking about you know, taking an Uber today, you're probably gonna have a difficult time finding one. But if you happen to live in a city or a state where drivers aren't striking, um, I think it's important to show solidarity Solidarity with these workers because the working conditions that they're experiencing right now is awful. And they're trying to fight the same thing that happened in California from spreading throughout the country. And of course, I'm talking about something called Proposition 22. Now, Proposition 22 is absolutely awful. I'm gonna get to the ramifications of that ballot initiative, which passed in California in just a minute. But first, the PRO Act. So app-based workers are fed up with the exploitation from big tech companies. Misclassification is like concrete, keeping us underground. The PRO Act is the jackhammer that will break that concrete apart, allowing app-based workers to organize. The PRO Act empowers labor. It makes it easier for a company or workers in a company to unionize without retaliation. You know, There's really no uniformity in terms of labor protections in this country. And the PRO Act would help provide protections regardless of which state you live in as a worker. If you're in a red state like Alabama, for instance, the laws on a federal level would provide additional and much needed protection for workers so they would be able to unionize without fear of losing their jobs or without fear of retaliation as a result of unionizing. Now, going to Prop 22, uh, actually, before I get to Prop 22 and what it did here in the state of California, John, I wanted you to weigh in. Um, you know, this is this is an important strike, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Do you think that it's going to have any impact? I mean, like with climate change, I don't think we'll be able to point to this and say this is the thing. But right. hopefully, it will get people, you know, around the world, around the country, to start thinking about this more. I mean, as you're going to describe, they're going up against an incredible amount of money. I mean, the amount that they poured into just one state, understanding that it's symbolic, that it sets a precedent and all that, but still just one state is is absurd. And it's it's great to see that companies that have had this much trouble actually turning a profit just seemingly have unlimited money to spend on these sorts of things, weirdly enough. Of course. Um, but yeah, I, I hope that it gets people at least a little bit invested in this. I'm glad that, that you pointed out the, the argument that was made by that driver, the great use of metaphor for the PRO Act, um, which definitely is needed. Supposedly is going to be a part of the reconciliation bill, um, although we'll have to see if it is able to make it through. I mean, after all, it's it's something that is widely popular, so much so that even Joe Manchin is supportive in support of it. But Kirsten Cinema, to go back to your point earlier, still not so much. Yeah, I, I like that you mentioned Joe Manchin because Joe Manchin in particular, especially his willingness to take. Uh, ownership of this legislation and say that he supports it. That didn't happen magically, it didn't come out of nowhere. DSA organizers had been hounding him about the PRO Act and finally he relented. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, I'm, I'm under the impression that he finally said that he would support the PRO Act because he assumed that there would never be a situation in which he would actually have to vote for it. Mm -hmm. But since Bernie Sanders, Senator Bernie Sanders is baking it into the reconciliation bill for infrastructure, uh, there's some likelihood that it could pass, but you know, Joe Manchin. It, some, Assuming anything some, does, some likelihood. <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't want to overpromise anything, and I don't want to come off as overly optimistic. I'm certainly not. Uh, but there is an avenue in which the PRO Act could pass, whereas before, I, I was like, if they're going to try to do this as a standalone bill, it's it's doomed, right? Mm-hmm. So anyway, we'll see what happens with that. Now let's get to Prop 22. So Prop 22 uh, authored by Uber, Lyft, Instacart, and DoorDash uh, went into effect in mid-December of 2020 after an aggressive public relations campaign of more than $200 million. It should be illegal. Launched by the companies. I mean, I hear you on that, absolutely. The companies outspent opponents to Prop 22 by 10 to 1, making it the most expensive ballot measure in California's history. So what Prop 22 did 
was reclassify workers in this third classification in order to allow these rideshare companies or these app based companies to deny these workers typical worker protections and benefits. And they spent so much money on propaganda to make these rideshare employees think that passage of the bill meant that they would actually make more money and have a lot more power over their own schedule, mm -hmm. right? And unfortunately, it worked. And so now the employees, not just in California, but in the cities that I mentioned earlier, are are doing what they can to prevent this kind of legislation or this kind of ballot initiative from being enacted mm -hmm. or proposed in their states. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean the, the the dollar value, the dollar figure that you're talking about there is absolutely absurd. Like I was looking up as for comparison, the cost of like presidential campaigns historically. And like, yeah. I, God knows if this is accurate, it's the FEC, but supposedly the 2000 campaign, the presidential campaign spent 500 million. Like, okay, that was two decades ago. That said, Jesus. it was to be president, not just to screw over some of your employees in one state. It is insane that they were able to spend that money. I understand that like, I guess it's a free speech thing or whatever, especially with the, the Supreme Court that we've got. Never forget the Supreme Court. Um, how can you allow them to spend that much? And I'm sure you live in California, so you saw the ads, right? You do too, I don't know if you know that. I do, <laughs> but I, well, I saw the ads actually, we have that in I common. Did. I did. Um, they were so offensive. Yep. Like, like what, they, what it should be is, if you wanna be honest, have your CEO sit there and look in the camera and be like, you know what, we're like really struggling financially. We haven't figured out this whole thing. It's probably a house of cards. But one thing that does seem to rest on is making sure that our employees make as little as possible and have to scrape by with no benefits whatsoever. So we'd love it if you would help us continue that. Please support Prop 22 or whatever. Um, but in making it about supposedly so many of your workers just being terrified at the idea that they might get health insurance or something, that is what they went with and apparently was successful. Yeah, it was it was unfortunately very successful in California. Um, since Prop 22's passage, uh, California drivers have been reporting steep, steep pay cuts and worsening working conditions. Um, Bell Valdez, who's a driver in Los Angeles, Ben Valdez, uh, who's a driver in Los Angeles says, quote, if you try to earn money just purely on the dr delivery fee, it comes out to about $5 an hour. A good day for me is maybe earning $100 before gas and expenses off eight hours of work. I've had maybe three or four nights where I literally made $4. Wait, $100 before gas yeah. and expenses when yeah. your job is driving? Driving, Think about what could possibly be left is. over after that. This is, you guys, I mean, when, okay, step back, look at the broader picture of what, what the business model has been for Uber and Lyft alone, right? So, what they started off doing was having their investors subsidize the, the, the whole system. So, mm -hmm. If you have taken an Uber or Lyft, especially in the early days, and you're like, whoa, this is a lot cheaper than taking a taxi. Understand that it's not just that they magically have lower prices. Their investors subsidized the cost in order to keep the prices low. Mm -hmm. And then basically put the taxi industry out of business to monopolize the market. Or, or in addition, figured we'll come up with something. Right. And then what they did, like lately, I don't, I, I made the mistake of taking an Uber recently, um, like a few months ago, recently, um, mostly because I was bullied by a friend to do it. Yes, I, I'm calling it bullying. I know you're watching this right now, and it was like it was a Lauren? seventy dollar ride, and I wanted to pull my hair. Oh my out. god! Yeah, I was furious. Did you get to keep the car? Because <laughs> no, that's crazy. But I like that you mentioned the car because here's the other thing they do: the company doesn't provide a vehicle for their drivers. So they've forced the drivers to use their own cars, pay for their own gas, all of that. So that's why you know that quote is so important because the driver is specifically talking about what the earnings are before having to pay for gas, car maintenance, and all of that. Well, I'm assuming like the wear and tear on your car eventually there's some sort of lump sum payment from Uber. No, to cover zero. That. No, zero. That's crazy. You know, yeah, the whole thing's ridiculous. Well, I mean, and and it sucks because having like you know having it be cheap is nice, I guess. I, I honestly don't even know, like, 
The, the drivers talking about how much they're making, I was shocked at how little they end up taking home, especially considering, as you say, the rides are very expensive. So obviously the money is going somewhere, and if it's not going to the drivers, I mean, that equation isn't that difficult to figure out. Well, John. What is Uber even doing? The driver is the only person really doing work. I There's an the app, but. I've got the answer, okay, John. Okay, what, what do you got? They don't get paid when they're in their car driving around looking for someone to take from sure. point A to point B. So a huge portion of their day while they're working is essentially unpaid labor because they don't have a passenger in their vehicle. Mm -hmm. So you think about the maintenance costs for the vehicle, you think about the gas, you think about the time spent in the vehicle working where you're not getting paid. It is Prop 22 allowed this kind of exploitation to take place. Mm -hmm. So. The business model is disgusting. Keep in mind that Uber has never turned a profit. Mm -hmm. It just like keeps bleeding money. It's a failed business model and they're just screwing over their workers. I, it makes no sense. And, and I like that these workers are standing up and saying, no, we're not gonna take it anymore. They're doing their strike today. Yeah. Um, and I hope I mean, this is just the beginning, right? I hope that this uh, is something that spreads across the country. Um, but it's hard, right? Because if you don't have labor protections that would be um, provided under the PRO Act, you could lose your only you know, means, like your only way for earning income. Sure, right? yeah. So yeah, and it sucks because yeah, I mean, it would be cool if there was some other way in like crowded urban settings to move people around efficiently. We've been we've had scientists on it, but someday they're going to come up with something. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, but 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 p please pay attention to strikes like this, not just this, but obviously, you know, we talked a lot about Bessemer on the damage report. We've covered the coal strike that mainstream media doesn't seem to care about, even though aren't they like required to pretend they care about coal miners? But they won't even pretend now. Um, but also understand that in some cases, not necessarily, and this does get exaggerated for propaganda purposes for the corporations, but some changes that we advocate for might lead to having to pay more or your Amazon delivery is taking a little bit longer or something like that. But understand that what you are earning with that is people actually being treated humanely. So bear that in mind. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.